Hello everyone, welcome back to Code and Create. Hope you're all safe and well. Um, it's been a few weeks, uh, but we're back now, uh, back in the office today, um, which is exciting. I'm very excited for today's episode. Uh, you may have seen across our social that we've announced yesterday um, that we've partnered with Codiri.com. Codiri, if you don't know them, are an online game games platform uh, for developers. And you can see behind the uh, images there. Um, we're super proud of this uh, collaboration um, and it's an absolute pleasure to introduce the platform's founder um, and long-term developer, uh, Ricardo, to the stage today for Code and Create. Um, he is joining me now, I believe. Oh, sorry, just toggled you off. There we go. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Ricardo? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Working from home, so... Where's so, home? Say it again? Where is home? Where, uh, London, Southeast London. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us today, Ricardo. It's really, really cool to have you on. Obviously, we've been speaking for the last few weeks anyway, um, as I mentioned, with the Orbis and uh, Codiri partnership. So, really exciting. Um, so... Ricardo, for anyone that doesn't know, give us a little bit of background on yourself um, and what you do. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much, Joe. So, yeah, I'm a software developer. Uh, as you said, um, I work with JavaScript and friends, you know, React, Vue, Node, all, all these sort of things. And I've been working in the industry for about 18 years. And some time ago, I decided to stop uh, my commercial activity to create Codiri, as you said. Uh, Codery is an online platform where everybody can play with their coding skills and they can learn from zero to hero things like <laughs> HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, but beyond the full stack, we got things like Java, Python, and we're, we're expanding the, the stack, right? So uh, we'll, we'll go through all the details in a minute. But yeah, yeah. so the idea is that at Codery.com, everybody can, can learn coding for free. The, the platform is available on desktop and mobile devices, uh, Android, iPhones, at, uh, you know, all, all these sort of things. Yeah. And yeah, and we have a special focus on helping and privileged and underrepresented communities with the coding skills. So if anybody out there requires some coding help, we'll be more than happy to, to support them. Yeah, fantastic. It's a really, really cool platform. Um, and yeah, like you mentioned, we'll speak a bit more about that later on. Um, but for now, in terms of the, the session today, um, Ricardo, obviously going to be focusing on playing with JavaScript data structures. Mm. So um, can you tell us a little bit about that and what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, so we're going to start playing some games using the, the Codery platform. Uh, we'll start from some from the basics. So I would like to play a bit with uh, uh, strings, with objects. So we'll solve a few exercises uh, in that in that area in that scope. Uh, later on, we'll move to some a bit more complicated exercises, uh, talking about things like uh, arrays and math operations. And eventually, the last minutes we'll deal with. Uh, more complex exercise about uh, how to deal with nested data structure, recursion, and all these sort of things. Okay, cool. So we'll start off beginner, slowly going exactly. up and finishing with some advanced stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, sounds good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's get right into it, Ricardo. Uh, let's get started. Um, and then I'm happy for you to run with it now, and you can share your screen if you like. Mm, of course, yeah, yeah. Just before, all right. actually, uh, Ricardo, I forgot to mention for everyone who's watching, uh, we've got some. Uh, we've got a poll actually down at the bottom. I don't know if anyone's noticed it. We've had about eight votes already. Um, most people haven't used the Codiri.com platform, so this is your chance now to go and use it. You told, nice. you told you about it. Um, uh, so yeah, go and check it out, guys. It's it's awesome. Um, and as you'll see over the next hour, um, it will be really good. Any cool. questions as well? We've got uh, for Ricardo. Um, if you're watching on Crowdcast, then use the ask a question tab at the bottom or put it in the chat bar on the side and, and we'll get around to those questions as soon as possible. If you're watching on LinkedIn live, um, hit your questions in the comments and we'll try and get around to those as well. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt you there, Ricardo, but um, yeah, carry on. No, no problem at all. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'm now setting the screen. Uh, could you please confirm, Joe, that you can see my, my window? Yeah, all good. Cool, fantastic. So. What you can see is the 
Caudity platform. So this is the uh, homepage where you can essentially uh, filter the games that you want to play. So on the left hand side, you got a panel with different technologies, slash languages, frameworks, all these sort of things, right? Uh, then you can choose between different difficulty levels. So even if it's your very first time dealing with coding, that's fine. You pick the first uh, the first level, which is lower beginner, one star, and you'll find out that it's very easy to start, uh, you know, building your your tech skills. Um, so if so, you haven't had any any sort of prior training or anything like that, that lower beginner one is is quite user friendly, is it? Yes, the lower beginner. I, I, I can I can actually show it to you in a, in, in a second. So the, the lower beginner essentially you, you represents a scenario where you don't even need to do any coding. So we present you some algorithms with some gaps, and you need to yes you know choose the the right answer right like a quiz game. So right. it's, it's 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 less intimidating because even yeah. if you know nothing about coding, it's just about following a bunch of common sense rules, right? Yeah. Um, so it's like multiple choice. It is multiple choice. I mean, let, let, let's let's play one one question on, on multiple choice just just for demo purposes. So we select, for instance, JavaScript because that's the topic of the day, of course. And then lower beginner. So then on the right hand side, you have uh, a list of uh, available topics. Yeah. So when talking about coding, we got uh, functions, we got uh, conditionals, and of course we got uh, data structures, which is the, the the topic of of the day. So. I don't know, yes, as uh, an example, let me select uh, one of the topics. This is just for, for demo purposes. So for instance, yeah. math operations. Uh, once you click on it, what you will get is something like that. So as you can see on the left-hand side, I'm gonna zoom it in a bit for visibility purposes. On the left-hand side, we present you a problem. So for each topic, you are gonna face five questions. Um, so we present you the description of the problem, uh, some in some cases we show you some videos that will uh, help you to deal with the issue and then what uh, some examples about what the problem is so in this particular use case scenario we are inviting you to create a function called round so whenever we call the function round with uh, an argument which is a number your algorithm should round that number right so for instance if the facilitated number is 7.4 the result of rounding 7.4 is number seven right if the number is minus 4.1 the result of rounding it is minus four right so that's the definition of the problem on the right hand side as i said before you could the the, the the algorithm partially written so there are even if you're not familiar with JavaScript, even if you struggle with things like curly braces, semicolons, you know, that, that's fine because the exercise is, is halfway through. So what we give you is the problem partially solved. And then there is there is a gap. You see, there is a there is a placeholder here. Yeah. So now the point is we need to uh just choose the right answer. So I, I don't know, Joe, do you want to <laughs> Do you want to yeah. try? <laughs> Any? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it round? Round option A, right? So they mark it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's, go for let's, it. Let's no, I don't think that's quite correct. You see, if we pick the wrong option, then the left hand side becomes red ish. That means like eh, that's not correct. Yeah. But of course, we can we can change our mind. We, you were really close, uh, Joe, because in reality, the method is math dot round. That's oh, the that's correct that. way. Yeah, I, I was I'm in R in between those two. Uh, it's 50, 50 for me, and I got it wrong. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's take that, and then you see you get confetti time. That means that you know the, oh. the, answer, the answer is right, right? Uh, so once you manage to solve the problem, you can submit it, and then that, that implies that you move to question number two out of five. So you know that, that's pretty much the idea. Five questions. You need to do your best to solve them all. Of course, if any of the questions is particularly complicated, you don't feel very comfortable, you can skip it. Okay. Actually, this is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to skip the next questions. You can review them at the end. And let me show you what happens at the end of the exercise. So once you submit that module, you are going to get the score. So that the score is the way we evaluate your talent somehow, your ability to deal with this particular topic, with this particular module. So uh, 
considering that many of the attendees today, they it's the first time they they you know they play with Caldera. Let me do a quick round about the metrics that we are checking here. So first of yeah. all, we've got tenacity. That means how many questions you've completed out of five. Accuracy, that means how many times you thought you were right, however, you failed, right? This is what you know when when we, we see players getting a very, very, very low score on the accuracy, that's what we say that they they play in, in street fighter mode, right? If you are probably <laughs> About 30, you'll remember Street Fighter, right? When yeah, you just yeah, hit the buttons randomly to defeat your yeah. rival without that's any it, criteria. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the accuracy. Then we got the speed, which is, you know, crystal clear. How long it took you to complete the challenge? Yeah. Focus, how many times you went to Google or to Stack Overflow to get some extra help? And last but not least, elegance. So, elegance represents how uh, standard your code is according to some guidelines. I will talk about that later on a bit more, yeah, okay. about different types of standards with JavaScript. So anyway, that's, that's pretty much the, the way the platform works. On top of the individual training, which is the main focus of the session, uh, you can play coding challenges. We are not going to do that today, but uh, uh, you know, in a future session, we'll, we'll run coding challenges. And this activity is very fun because developers, they play against each other individually or by teams. Uh, and of course, if you are a, a data-driven person, you can check the leaderboards, who is first, who is second, best player of the day, best player of the week, best player by country, heat maps, you know. So we manage lots of uh, uh, analytics about the platform to make it to make it fun, right? At the end, yeah. we believe that the healthy competition aspect is, is, is very positive towards motivating our developers to practice, to play, and to develop their skills. So just out of interest, Ricardo, who's uh, top of the country leaderboard? Uh, so you can find here all the all the statistics, right? So uh, you can see that, for instance, uh, so these are the statistics from the from the UK, but you can find data from from other countries. Actually, there is something quite interesting here. You can find look top countries. So you see the UK at the moment is top one. Uh, of the days, yes. of the days, <laughs> so two of the weeks. So you know, I mean, UK based developers, there is an opportunity to. You know, overtake the US. Uh, yeah. uh, That's really you know. cool. I mean, I guess <laughs> is the, the main member base at the moment is it based in the UK? It is. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is. But but the thing is, we we're obviously expanding to other countries. We've run some international coding events across different countries, and they are catching up, right? So <laughs> yeah. I think this is quite it's quite fun. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else, Joe, or should I just start with the uh, action? Uh, we've actually got a question um, yep. coming in. Um, mm -hmm. It was something I was going to mention, um, actually, because this is open source, isn't it? So, like, every, anyone can come in and sort of um, contribute to making these games and questions. That, um, that's correct. Uh, yeah. and, and Ben uh, Ben's asked if um, he's, added, he's mentioned that Codera it's ace, um, which is a good thing. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he's asked if there's any plans to include uh, Kotlin into. That's that's a really good question, actually. It's a really good question. So you said something absolutely right. So Codir is an open platform, and that means that everybody can contribute by creating new games. Actually, some of the games we're going to play today have been created by some of the collaborators we got all around the world. Um, so myself, I, I mean, I'm a full stack developer, and I have some I believe I have some good understanding about JavaScript and friends, but for instance, I'm not a Java developer, I'm not a Python developer. However, we collaborate with people who are experts in this language and technologies. Yeah, so of course, uh, actually everybody can contribute. You will find out on the left-hand side something called exercises list where you can create your own questions and everything. And if you are keen to uh, collaborate, if you want to help, yes, uh, let us know because we'll be more than happy to support you. Don't forget that one of the goals of the platform is to uh, help and privilege and un uh, underrepresented communities, as I said before. So if you contribute uh, to Codiri by creating new games, so all these communities will, will benefit from, from that action, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Ben, I'll put you in touch um, with Ricardo and you can start building out the Kotlin presence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if 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 Ben wants to help out with Colin, uh, we'll be more than happy to work together because that's definitely something absolutely important and trendy. And and of course, we'd love to to play Colin challenges one day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, cool. All right. So, unless you got any other questions, Joe, I think uh, I'm gonna start. 
Uh, yeah, no, carry on. Okay, fantastic. So as, as we've said before, let's just start with something easy. I mean, I'm not going to do the lower beginner level, but I'm, because I want to do a bit of coding, uh, but still quite beginner. So first of all, I would like to talk about strings, which is probably, you know, the most fundamental topic in JavaScript. Uh, talking about text messages, hello world, you know, all these sort of things. So let me select uh, JavaScript, upper beginner strings, and then let's see what we get here. So on the very first question, we uh, got a problem. So we have to create a method in JavaScript uh, with the name get welcome message. So whenever we call the message, let me zoom it in a bit. Here you go. Whenever we call the get welcome message, we should return welcome to JavaScript. On the right hand side, uh, we need to you know bring our magic. So the function has been partially created. We can see the signature that gives us a feeling about how JavaScript works because you got some keywords, the keyword function, the name of the function, some parentheses. We'll see in a minute what that means. Some curly braces. You know. So if it's your very first time with JavaScript, that will give you an idea about how to create. Um, you know, algorithms, right? Okay, so what we need to know is that in JavaScript, uh, when you call a function, uh, if you want the function to bring something back, we need to type the return keyword. And now we have to uh, present the expectation. So what's the expectation? We are expected to type a, a string, uh, which is welcome to JavaScript. All right, so let me try to type something like that. Now, I would like to see if there, are, if anyone has any feelings about whether this is going to work or not. I feel like I can't answer because of my poor performance on the first <laughs> question. Um, so yeah, guys, get involved in the chat bar if, you think, um, if you've got any questions or any answers to, to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there are a couple of problems here. L let me spoil one of them. So. The first one, and that's arguably you know, the most obvious one, is if you pay attention to details, uh, the, the expected message is welcome to JavaScript exclamation mark at the end, right? So that was missing. Uh, of course, as soon as one character is wrong, you know, the whole thing is going to fail, right? That's the way it works. And now the second problem, and I'm sure someone has spotted it already, is look at the casing. So welcome to JavaScript, and this is written in capital S, yeah? So uh -huh. JavaScript, as many other languages, is case sensitive. So if I test it, that's not going to work. It's very subtle, but important. Yeah? JavaScript is case sensitive. So we should make sure that we match the case. A bit of topic. When I started to call many years ago, JavaScript was written with a small s. But someone, I don't know why, they say to change the big s, right? <laughs> Right, before I feel very old, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's leave it there. Let's test it. And then here you go. You see that now the code is actually working. Um, so if there are any, any questions, Joe? Um, at the moment, um, no. We've got, uh, no, not the moment. OK. OK, let, let, me, let me bring something then. Um, here, as you can see, I'm using uh, single quotes. Uh, what happens if I change single with double quotes? Mm. I see, yeah. What do you think, yo? Is that going to work or not? Um, I think it would work, yeah. All right. Let's... Nice. You're right. It yeah, works. Yes, so I've getting the confetti for once. That's good. Confet exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> good accuracy, <laughs> yo. So yeah. is, there, is, is there a preferred option then between using double and single quotes? That's a really good question. That's a really good question, Joe. Even though, technically speaking, we could use either one or the other. And I could I could even be one step beyond and use something called backticks. Yeah, this is a new thing. Well, new. It's like five years old. It's not new anymore. But it's a relatively new thing in JavaScript using backticks. If I do that, it still works, right? So right. technically speaking, we, could, we can solve the problem using th three different approaches. However, yes, there is a preferred option. The preferred option is consider, generally speaking, single quotes. And now you may be thinking, but why is that the preferred option? Is it because I think so? Is it because you think so? None of that. This is because there are some companies and some organizations trying to standardize the way we deal with JavaScript. And that's important. That's mm. important. Why? 
because if I'm using single quotes, you are using double quotes, someone else is using back ticks. At the end of the day, even though we're speaking the same language, but we are dealing with different accents. When talking about human communications, dealing with accents is good, it's nice, it's even sexy. However, <laughs> when talking about coding, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. We should try to speak the same language, of course, and the same accent. Yeah. Yeah. Another makes question sense. is who decides what's the right accent? Yeah. Who decides that? Again, there are different organizations. One of the most popular ones, and I know this could be surprising for many uh, new developers, but that's true. So one of the most important standards about styling in JavaScript is written by Airbnb. So if you search on Google Airbnb JavaScript, you will land on a, on a very long web page, which is a GitHub repo actually, where Airbnb suggests how JavaScript should be written. So they got style guides for different languages and libraries, including React and all those sorts of things. But towards the scope of this session, um, something you'll find out is that they, in the table of contents, they talk about the strings. And the first thing they said is use single quotes for strings. And then, look, this is really good because they present you some examples. So bad, double quotes, bad, bad things, good single quotes right and in some occasions they and that's one of the things i love about this style guide they try to argue they try to explain why under the point of view something is considered good or bad yeah so yeah uh that doesn't mean that you have to follow airbnb style guide end to end that depends on on the company and there are obviously exceptions but it's good to have this sort of rules uh, in the background, right? Trying yeah. to merge our coding styles. Uh, anything else, Joe? Um, no, for now. Um, Mohammed on the side has put, um, is this platform going to be free? And when can we expect tutorials um, on this platform? Yeah, yeah, no, the, the, yeah. Platform, the platform is free. Talking about tutorials, we have tutorials already. So you'll find out there is something called video tutorials. And here you are going to find out tutorials about many different aspects. So, for instance, Coldflix, that's the way, that's the way, the result of combining Coldery and Netflix. So, here you learn how to create professional grade apps from scratch using a modern stack, JavaScript, React, HTML, CSS, also backend, Node.js, MongoDB. Yeah. So, you'll find lots of tutorials here. Uh, then uh, you also you will find some of the meetup events we've celebrated in the past. Uh, some nice workshops we have recorded, some coding recipes where you can find me with a whiteboard, uh, you know, writing some lines and talking about coding, you know, speaking. So yeah, we got we got plenty of uh, video tutorials already. Uh, and of course, if anyone has any any suggestion about, oh, why don't you talk about this or about that, you know, this is a uh, this is an open platform. So feel free to let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Cool. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, so. Let's do at least one more question on the on the uh, JavaScript strings beginner. So, so yep. mm -hmm. I was going to say, so should the variable names reflect the type of data that they hold? Mm. Should they talk about the sort of semantics of the problem that you're trying to solve? That's, I guess? that's a really good question. That's a really good question. So, uh, look. So, for instance, in this occasion, look, we got a function call get welcome name. Uh, the function receives an argument, you see? So the argument, that's the way we can customize the behavior of our function. Mm -hmm. So the argument is the input, and eventually the uh, function will return an output, whatever we want, right? So we can type Brexit if you want. Probably that's not the best example, but you get the <laughs> point, right? You, you can return whatever you want. So the question, the question is, here we call the argument username. But technically speaking, can I type here, uh, I don't know, hello? Or can I type door? Or can I type, you know, uh, times, whatever? Yeah. So the answer is yes, you can type here whatever you want. But the point is, first of all, let's solve the problem. And once the problem is solved, we'll see the impact 
of dealing with the wrong semantics. So I'll be back to that question in a minute. For now, let's keep it as it is, username. And now let's see how to combine strings like hello with variables, Peter, Marta, or Andrew, right? So the way you can do that in JavaScript is, first of all, historically speaking, you can do something like that, hello. And then using the plus operator, you can just type the variable name, yeah? Hello space plus username. So if we do that, you see the code works. Um, starting from 2015, there is a probably better way of combining string literals with variables. And this is by using string interpolation and backticks. You remember I took, I briefly talked about backticks before. Yeah. So with backticks, look, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that here just for reference purposes and I'm gonna refactor that line. So return backticks and now hello space dollar curly brace and close curly brace, right? So then we type username. So line number two, is equivalent to line number three. And the more complex the expression you are dealing with is, the more convenient that syntax is. Because you save the mess, you avoid the mess of dealing with plus spaces. I don't know, it feels a bit more natural, personally speaking, yeah? yeah. So if I test that piece of code, you see, it works fine and now back to your question, Joe. So technically speaking, I can rename username with a car. If I run this piece of code, it works. But as you are already thinking, uh, from a semantics point of view, this is horrible because car has nothing to do with the semantics of the exercise. Yeah. yeah? So even though it's correct, technically speaking, it works, you are making things way more complicated to your colleagues because they, if I come across that piece of code and I find a function called get welcome message and I see the argument is car, I will imagine we're talking about vehicles, right? However, yeah. that's not the case. We're talking about humans, about person. Yeah. About, no? So it's very important to, to work well on the semantics. I know some people, they like to keep it generic, something like that. That's correct, because at the end of the day, Peter is a string, Marta is a string, Andrew is a string. But if we do that, we are missing the opportunity of improving the semantics. A string yeah. tells me the type of data I'm dealing with, fantastic. But I believe there is much more value uh, by renaming it to something meaningful. I don't know, you can call it username, you can call it name, person name, I don't care, right? But at least let's try to uh, make things easier for our colleagues. Many many people believe that coding, it's, it's difficult and probably it is. But if writing code is difficult, reading others code can be even more challenging because yeah. everyone has different approach towards coding and that could be definitely challenge, challenging in the, in the long term. That's yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense completely. So I guess it's although it can work the other way, it's just um, easier and and helpful mm -hmm. to others to um, to make sure that it's you know matches what your actual strings are. Definitely, definitely, I completely with you, Joe. All right, I think we we just quite a lot of time on the on the strings topic. Uh, yeah. Should we change to something different? Should we do a bit of objects, Joe? Yeah, sounds good. Fantastic. So I'm going to leave it there, um, back to the landing page, and I will select JavaScript, upper beginner. And in this occasion, I'm going to find objects. Here they go. All right. So objects. What is an object? An object is a slightly more complicated data structure in JavaScript, where, to simplify things a bit, an object is a collection of key value pairs. Yeah. So you can think an object is like a dictionary, where you got a key. So first name, and you got the value associated to the key, Peter. You got another key, last name, and the value associated to that key, Luis, right? So the object is uh, determined by these curly braces. You see, uh, JavaScript uses curly braces for <laughs> too many things, and that's a bit confusing sometimes. But yeah. in this scope, you see I'm highlighting the object. So the get first name function receives 
an argument, a single argument, which is an object. So then we can map it here. Can you give me yo, a good argument name to represent that object? A good argument name? Yeah. So I'm going to give you three options. Well, uh, football team or city or user. User. You see? That's crystal clear, right? Uh, yeah. Because we are talking about, I don't know, people. I don't know if user is better than person. I don't know. But, you know, at least it's better than football team for sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how we work with objects. So um, that function receives an object with first and last name. And it's expected to return the first name, Peter. So the way, the way we solve the problem is by referring to the object, user, and then, that's very important, with dot notation, we declare the property that we want to deal with. In this particular case, we want to get the first name of the user. So we'll type user.firstName. That's the way we can point to the first name of the user. That's not going to work, however. This is a classic mistake when coding by the first time in languages like JavaScript. Imagine that I believe that piece of code is absolutely brilliant. However, look at what happened if I test it. The problem is telling us you didn't return anything. And the reason is, guys, remember that if you want to bring something back to whoever called the function, you should type the return keyword in front of the expression you wanna you wanna return right that's pretty obvious but you know it it is it's easy to forget yeah uh yeah i think that's pretty much it uh any, any questions anything else uh joe um not from me at the moment um okay again guys okay. if you've got any questions for ricardo as we're going along yep. get them in the chat bar um yeah yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get around to them. But yeah, carry so, on, Ricardo. And I'll, I'll let you know as and when they come in, yeah? Exactly. Feel free to interrupt me at any time, Joe. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Question number two. Mm -hmm. Things get a bit more spicy here, yeah? So, so we're stepping it up a little notch here. A bit intermediate level now. Uh, we're still on beginner. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're still objects beginner. So I'll do one or two more questions, and then I'll jump straight to, to uh, intermediate level. Okay, cool. So here, the problem is very similar. Get first name, again, Peter, right? So that's the same thing. The, the issue is the structure of the object, it's a bit more complicated because what we got here is a multi-level object. We got our argument, that's the object, as you can see on the left-hand side of my screen. However, the name property of the object is another object, yeah? And that's an absolutely valid structure in JavaScript. Imagine that uh, you want to save your, I don't know, personal details. So at some point, you may have something like that. So you will have um, something called user. And then you may have something called address. And as part of the address, you can have something like line one with, I don't know, the number, and then line two, whatever. Yeah? That's an absolutely valid structure in JavaScript. And that helps a lot towards keeping your information organized. Yeah? The way we will access to, for instance, the line one of the user address will be by typing user dot address dot line one. And that will return string 34. So that's pretty much what we need to do here. So here we are gonna return user dot name dot first. Let's see what happens if we test that snippet. As many of you already realized, that's not gonna work. And the reason why this is not gonna work, if we pay attention to the console at the bottom, it's throwing an error user is not defined and the reason is user is the data that gets provided to the function however we forgot to bind it here in the 
parentheses. Yeah. So these are the classic mistakes that we used to do uh, when we start coding with with JavaScript. Yeah. Get first name, then the argument name, and then return whatever we want to return. All right. Uh, I got a question for you, uh, Joe. What if I? What happens if I rename user with object here and there? Do you think this is going to work or not? Well, um, yeah. Yeah, you are absolutely right, Joe. It's going to work because, as we said before, we can type how whatever we want here. But, yeah. but I guess you don't really agree much, right, about this semantics because exactly, object, yeah. it's not very meaningful, right? It's not meaningful enough, right? So let's call it something like that, user. Question for me, uh, Joe? Um, not at the moment, uh, Ricardo. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, all good. All right, fantastic. Question number three. Oh, I love this one. That's that's a bit more complicated, and many people struggle with this one, which is great, right? Because then we can we can see how to deal with it all together. So exactly. we've said before, we said before that in JavaScript, uh, you can uh, access any properties of the object by using the uh, dot notation. So let me bring the example back. I mean, I got a user, and I got an address. And then I want to get the first line, line one, whatever, and then line two, got something like that. So if eventually you're going to get the line two of the address, you will type user dot uh, address dot line two, and that will return whatever the address is, right? That's fine. That's fine. So I could create a function. If I wanted function get user address line two, for instance, yeah? if I wanted, I could create that. And that function will receive the user and it will return user.address.line two. And that's fine. That, that's absolutely correct. What if I want to get the first line of the user address? Well, similarly, I can create another function get user address line one. And as part of this function, I can actually uh, do something like that. Yeah, and that's that's absolutely fine. Uh, the only thing I need to do is to change user address uh, to line one. Yeah, but the problem here is the problem here is if uh, we got many properties, are we going to create one function for each property? This could be a bit too much, right? Mm. So in JavaScript, there is a different way to make your functions more dynamic. So in JavaScript, rather than using the dot notation, we can do something like that. We can use a square bracket notation, which is a different thing in JavaScript. And then we can do something like uh, passing the proper name, like for instance, line one or line two or phone number, whatever. Yeah, you can pass properties using the string, the square bracket notation. Why this is relevant? Because then, we can create a variable. So let me create a variable called uh, the property we want to access. So for instance, line two. And finally, we can do something like that. Yeah? So the point is that I don't need two functions, get user address line one and get user address line two. So I can create a single function called get user address line. And then I can pass the property I want to access. So then the way I, I will call that is by typing get user address line one, user line one, and that will return the number. Or alternatively, if I want to get the street name, I will call the same function with line two. And then your code gets a bit more simple yeah? because I don't need to create as many functions as properties I want to deal with. So uh, in that respect, in that respect, uh, we need to do something very similar. We got the first argument, which is the user, and then we got the property we want to access. So the only thing we need to do is to return user, and then with a square bracket, taking the property that we want to return. Yeah? I know that's a bit mind-blowing, especially as you got used to the um, dot notation, but that gives you a lot of flex flexibility towards dealing with different properties of an object in a very simplistic fashion. And that's pretty much it. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely slightly, you lost me slightly more there than, than the, the few questions before. But yep. um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it just looks as though it's, you know, quite simple to get your mm -hmm. head around in this mm -hmm. in this platform, if you like. Um, yep. Yeah, it's really cool. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it about objects. So let's continue increasing the difficulty of this session by doing a bit more advanced. So let's talk about uh, arrays. So what an array is. So an array is just a, a collection, a sequential collection of elements. So for instance, uh, imagine that I, I got, uh, I, want, I have uh, three cars, so I could create a variable called cars, and then the name of the cars, right? Or the brands, the makes, or, or whatever, yeah? So that's, that collection is an array, and as you can see, it's represented by square brackets. If you remember before, we show how to deal with um, objects, and yeah. objects got represented by curly braces or curly brackets. However, arrays are represented by square brackets. Yeah. All right. So that question, this is a bit tricky, actually. Uh, that's probably not the first question to start dealing with arrays, but you know, that's intermediate, right? So we are we are dealing with more uh, complex challenges over time. So we want to create some sort of utility component where we want to add elements to existing arrays. Yeah. People, cars, animals, computer brands, I don't care. Yeah, we want to want to be able to interact with our list of elements by appending, prepending, for instance, deleting, deleting the first element of the list and deleting the last element of the list. So, first of all, append. So the first argument is gonna be uh, the name of the of the argument. So here it looks like we're talking about people. So let me call it people in plural, yeah, or representing, you know, uh, something uh, that could hold more than one element. And eventually, uh, for instance, the person that we want to add to the to the array. Yeah, Remember, append means I want to add that person at the end of the list, as you can see here. So... Technically speaking, uh, some of you may be thinking about using something called push, and that's probably completely okay. So something we could do is uh, running people.push, and then the name of the person, and then eventually let's return the people once we push the person into it. Push is the same as append. Yeah, Push is the technical way of appending elements to the array. How do we prepend? Well, very similar, very similar concept. However, instead of push, in this occasion, we are going to use something called unshift. So unshift will prepend that person to the beginning of the array. And then we will return it. Uh, and now, how do we delete the first element in an array? of people so the way look if we prepend using and shift the way we delete the first one is by using shift i mean these are just uh javascript array utility methods and we need to get used to them uh, i'll talk about that in a minute a bit more uh, before let me just show how to delete the last element of an array so the way we get rid of the last one is by using pop. Yeah. So arrays are, under my point of view, the most powerful and sophisticated data structures in JavaScript. And that hasn't been like that since the beginning. JavaScript was first introduced in 1995. However, until 2010, it was a bit difficult to deal with arrays. The APIs offered by JavaScript were very simplistic. We needed things like Lodas or underscore. We needed external tools to deal with arrays efficiently. However, starting from 2011 and particularly 2015, every new version of JavaScript has 
increase the power, has added new methods, new utilities to simplify the process of dealing with JavaScript. To the point that you will see that when dealing with more complicated uh, data structures, you will tend to transform everything into arrays because it will be much easier to transform, operate, move, and all these sort of things. Yeah. So let's see if that works. I think we are gonna struggle a bit here. Let's let's see why. Look, if I test it, mm, it's almost perfect. However, one of the one of the expectations, one of the assertions is not working. And this is about the first method we created, append. Why this is not working? Because in this occasion, we are trying to append something different. Yeah, and On top, we are trying to append a string. We've talked about the strings already. However, in this occasion, we are trying to append an array into an another array, which is it's OK in JavaScript that the structure of nested arrays is completely valid. However, in regards of this exercise, that's not what the algorithm wants us to do. So apparently, what the algorithm wants us to do is if we are trying to append a string, then fantastic, do it. Yes, push it at the end of the array. However, if we are trying to append an array, ignore it. So there are there are a couple of ways we can solve the problem. One of them is by checking the type of person. So how do we check the type of person? We can type type of person equal 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 uh, string. Yeah? So if the person is a string and nothing else, then Add it to the array. Yeah? That's a way to uh, solve the problem somehow. Actually, let's test it. And actually, you see, it works. Um, Joe, unless there is any question on the on the chat, um, um, not at the moment. Well, okay. we've got, uh, a few questions coming in that um, oh, we have had one in from Jaz Jasvir actually. Mm -hmm. um, He's, he's asked, how can we append and delete a particular position? Ah, that's a really good question. And I think it's unfortunate that we're going to run out of time because that question is very important. But if you want to append to a, to a particular position, the best way to do it is by using a highly controversial yet powerful method called splice. splice. Don't confuse a splice with a slice. So one splice. thing is a splice, yes, and the other thing is a, a slice. So with a splice, we can pass multiple arguments. So first of all, we pass the index. The index, let's present an example. Imagine where we've got the list of uh, people, which is uh, Joe, Ricardo, that's it, right? We've got a list of people. Imagine that we want to add someone in between. We want to add Mary, for instance, in between of Joe and Ricardo. So the way you will do it, is by using people.splice. First of all, the index where you want to deal with. So the index will be one, because in JavaScript, we start at index number zero. So Joe will be index zero. Ricardo will be index one. But because we want to add Mary in between of Joe and Ricardo, yeah, we want to attack index number one. The second element is going to be, how many elements do you want to remove? You see, that's why this is a bit confusing. That is the way it works. So we don't want to remove any elements. We want to keep you on Ricardo. However, the third element represents how many or which element or elements do you want to add to the array. So in this occasion, you can do something like that. So by running people to the splice one zero and Mari, what we'll get back eventually is Joe, Mari, and Ricardo. Yeah. And the beautifulness about the splice, once you got used to it, is that you can add multiple elements in that index. So Mari and Carolina, for instance, that will add Joe, Mari, Carolina, and Ricardo. And actually, if I sort of zero put one, it will remove element at index one. That was me. So that will essentially keep an array with Joe, Mario, and Caroline. Yeah? So splice is very powerful, um, but be careful with it because it's, 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 it's a bit, you know, it takes a bit of time to get used to, to, the, to this API. Um, so for instance, splice returns the number of elements that the array has removed. That's a bit controversial. This is a classic example of all JavaScript. I mean, today there are millions of JavaScript developers 
the standard ECMAScript standard is is community driven. So there are so many there's so many there are so many people looking after the standard that the APIs are beautiful. But in the past, some of these APIs were a bit mm, I don't know strange. Yeah, trying to be polite. <laughs> Anyway, um, I got a question for, for the audience, uh, something to, to keep in mind. If you were presenting that piece of code to, uh, for instance, as part of a job interview, if you were applying to a mid-level to senior sort of, uh, if you were applying to a mid-level to senior, senior position role, I'm afraid you won't get it. They will complain about the approach. Yeah, I'm not gonna say why. There is something fundamentally wrong. I mean, I'll tell you something. It works. We got confetti, blah blah blah. But there is something wrong here, and I don't want to explain what. I'll leave the question open, and of course, feel free to participate here on Meetup or LinkedIn, and I'll be more than happy to. To have a, a chat with you about you about your thoughts. Yeah. Um, anything else, Joe? Um, no, I think that's it um, at the moment. All right. So I think we've got ten minutes left. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to give you the uh, the option to decide what do you want me to do. So I got you. I'm going to give you two options. Continue with this level of difficulty, talking about numbers, math operations, blah blah, or you know, going a bit crazy and doing something really complicated what do you want me to do oh good question um let's uh, let's stick on the intermediate stuff and it'll <laughs> okay. give us an opportunity give us an opportunity to to do another one of these at more of an advanced level oh okay ben, ben's gone complicated uh, do you know what let's go complicated all right let's go complicated let's, let's do go it complicated. fantastic 10 minutes guys all right so <laughs> i'm gonna do a bit of javascript upper advance and i'm gonna do recursion recursion is one of the things Recursion to me is like being pregnant. Either you are pregnant or you are not pregnant. <laughs> you cannot be half pregnant. That's a great analogy. I like that. Uh, so, yeah. So, to me, the, the first time you deal with complex algorithms, recursion could be really complicated, much more complicated than any other topic. But at some point, at some point, once you get used to how recursion works, it becomes super easy. Yeah. So, yeah, let, let's see what recursion is. So, in this occasion, look, the problem itself is a piece of cake. Understanding from a human point of view what the hell are we trying to do here is super simplistic. We receive an object. We've talked about objects already. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to add all the numbers available as part of that object, right? So, how many numbers we got here? We got number one, minus two four and three so the result of adding one plus minus two plus four plus three is six yeah so you say you may be thinking all right but that, that's pretty simple right it is from a human point of view it is very simple but solving this problem from a mathematical point of view has some challenges and it could be complicated really complicated depending on the structure of your data so here you see we've got an object that has another sub-object. And this sub-object, look at the second use case scenario, the second sub-object has another sub-object. So we can have a multi-level object and it could be hard to evaluate, hard to parse. And this is why recursion can help us a lot. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to solve the problem and I'm going to present um the flow that my code will follow in a visual friendly way is that's at least my plan so first of all i cannot talk about people cars or football teams here because this seems very i don't know domain agnostic so i'm gonna call it just object because i have no idea about what are we talking about here um and now look I'm going to do something. I'm going to use something called object mind the big O dot values. And that will return. Let me actually add some annotations on the right hand side to show what I'm doing on each step. So object values object will return an array, always return an array with the values associated to all the keys. So if we focus on the first use case scenario, this array will have three values first of all number one the second 
value will be an object, and the third value will be number three. Yep. So three elements at the end of the day, two numbers and one object in between. All right, and once we got that, I'm gonna use a super powerful method called uh, reduce. So reduce is very convenient when you need to loop over your array. Definitely we want to iterate, right? We want to go from the beginning to the end and you wanna keep some state. You wanna pass some data from one iteration to the other. This is gonna be, if you've never used reduce, if you never use recursion, this is gonna sound like Chinese, but uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll try to explain it later on. So with reduce, we can facilitate different um, arguments. So for instance, uh, the first one is what we call the accumulator. That's a technical description you will find on MDN and other external resources. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about whether I like this or not, but for now, for educational purposes, let's leave it like that. Then we got each individual element on the, of the array. So I'm gonna call it value. And then we can pass other arguments, but I'm gonna keep it simple. So unless we need them, I'm gonna leave the others as they are. Then something very important is the accumulator will be the state that will be passed from iteration i to iteration i plus one. So we have to initialize it. We have to provide a default value. How are we gonna do that? By passing a second argument to the reduce function with the default value of the accumulator. So now, in reality, we want to do something like that. We want to return, what we return on one iteration will be the accumulator on the next one. I'll, as I said before, I'll explain that in a more visual way in a minute. But uh, for now, we want to keep incrementing the counter, right? So uh, first of all, we got one, and then we want to add minus two, and then we want to add four, and then we're going to add three. So we want to fill the basket. You know, when you go to Tesco or to Sainsbury, you, you fill the basket with your groceries. So that's pretty much the same principle. The accumulator is the basket. We are filling iteration after iteration. All right. So I could do something like that, but that's not going to work. Let me show you why this is not going to work, and let me present you my matrix. So on the first iteration, the value of the accumulator is going to be zero because that's the default. The value is going to be one because that's the first value. That's okay. That's fine. However, the main problem here is going to be uh, that we're going to return zero plus one. That's still okay. Sorry. But now on iteration number two, the accumulator is what we return on the previous iterations. The accumulator is one. But now, here is the problem, guys. The value, the second value, is an object with this data, C minus two, D4. So here we are trying to do one plus this thing. That doesn't make any sense. That will return probably something like something called not a number, right? Because how can we process this basic mathematical operation? We cannot. Unfortunately, JavaScript doesn't know. You can do one plus two or one plus minus four, but not one plus object, blah, blah. That, that doesn't make any sense. So we need some pre-processing. So what's going to be the pre-processing? The pre-processing here is going to be, we need to create a variable. Let me call it, uh, for instance, current value. And then we need to check the type of the value. So we briefly talked about how to use type of before. So if the type of value is number, Look, I'm typing uh, what we call a ternary operator. So this is the condition. If the value is a number, then yes, I want to add it. Else, if it's an object, we're assuming that if it's not a number, it's an object. Then look, that's the complex part. We need to call recursively. We need to call the same function, calculate total. But in this occasion, I'm going to pass the value because I would like to calculate the total associated to this sub object. So let's do something. Let's continue running or representing this problem. I'm gonna add a new row on top, which is gonna be the dimension. And on the dimension, I'm gonna say whether I'm on the root level or I'm on a nested level, like Inception, if you remember the movie. <laughs> so what happened now? What happened now? So the value is an object. So what do we report? 
We don't know yet. We don't know because we got an object because the type of the value is not a number, it's an object. What we need to do is we need to change the dimension. We need to go deeper. So we start again. We call calculate total again. And in this occasion, the accumulator is going to be zero because we start over. And because now this is our entry point, the first value is going to be two. Sorry, minus two. And then that's going to return zero plus minus two, which is minus two. So then we continue iterating. Uh, dimension two, iteration two. Now the accumulator is minus two. The value is four. So here this is going to return minus two plus four, which is two. What happened on dimension two, iteration three? Nothing, nothing, because that object only has two values. So that means that the second iteration is over. And that means that the result of the end of the iteration two which is number two out of coincidence, will be the current value. So that expression pop, will be replaced by number two. And because now we are playing with numbers, we can easily identify the result of adding one and two, which is going to be three. Yeah? So finally, finally, the only thing we need to do is back to dimension one. Now we're on iteration number three. The accumulator was three. Here you go. So accumulator is three. The final value is three out of coincidence again. Here you got it on top. So the final result is going to be three. That was the previous total plus the new value, which is three again. So three plus three is obviously six. Yeah. So unless we did something wrong, if we evaluate that. Oh, actually, uh, oh, right, of course, I forgot. So I created a variable, as you can see here, but I completely forgot to add it here at the end yeah so that was a silly mistake and you see that once i fix it it works and it works regardless of how complex our object is yeah? i'm not 100 happy about that but i think we are out of time so i'm not gonna continue explaining <laughs> how to improve that but that's some sort of you know homework guys how can you improve this algorithm how can you simplify it little bit yeah um from my side uh joe unless there is, there are any questions uh you know that's that's pretty much all i wanted to present today yeah cool really appreciate that um ricardo i think we could have gone on all afternoon then to be honest but um yeah we've got to keep it keep it to um to the hour so really appreciate you getting involved um and i'd just like to add um obviously following on our from our partnership i mentioned earlier with Kodiri on the 26th of September, is that right? I think it's oh, 23rd, 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 23rd Wednesday. 23rd, <laughs> yes, Wednesday yeah. the 23rd of September, um, we're hosting a, a meetup which where everyone can get involved. Um, so it's gonna be a JavaScript challenge based. Um, you can come in, join us remotely and play along with, with Ricardo and, and many other people. So keep an eye out on our socials, um, on my LinkedIn, Orbis LinkedIn, on the meetup page um, it will be everywhere and um it will be really really excited for that it's going to be really cool so yeah um keep an eye out again ricardo thank you very much for joining us really thank like you for having me <laughs> no worries at all uh, thanks for coming guys and we'll see you soon